Here is an example of a linked list in C-sharp. In C-sharp and Java, the linked list class is implemented as a doubly linked list. The linked list class has two basic properties. It has a head node and a tail node. To access the head node, we have a public property first, which has a getter to the head node. To access the tail node, we have a public property of node called last, which has a getter method to return the tail node. Also, typical implementations of linked lists have a length property. The length property has a public getter to get the length and a private setter to set the length within the class. So let's take a look at the node class, which we use for the head of the list and the tail of the list. Each node must store some data, so we have a data property with a getter and setter method for private data. In this case, data is an integer for simplicity of the example. In a doubly linked list, each node has a next node. Here we have a public property next to reach the next node in the list. The public property next simply has a getter and setter for the private property next. In a doubly linked list, we also have a previous property. So we have a public property of type node called previous, which simply has a getter and setter for a private property called previous of type node. To create a new node, we simply have a constructor that takes in data and sets it to the data on the node. And that's the basic setup for a node on a doubly linked list. Since this is C sharp, to be able to loop through the list, we must implement ienumerable. In this case, we're looping through each node in our for each loop, so we will implement ienumerable of type node. To implement ienumerable is simple. We have a public method called get enumerator and we return an ienumerable of type node. So to get the enumerator of the linked list, we simply set the current node to the head of the list. And then we loop through with a while loop until the current node is null. On each iteration of the while loop, we use the yield keyword to return the current node of the list. This will in turn return the current node when we're going through a for each loop on our list. And then we simply call our current node and set our current node equal to the current node's next node until we reach the end of the list. And to complete the implementation of ienumerable, we have ienumerator, ienumerable dot get enumerator returning get enumerator that we just created. Also, since we're using a doubly linked list and our doubly linked list has a tail, it's easy to implement the reverse of get enumerator. So here's our method, get enumerator reverse, which returns ienumerable that will allow us to do a for each loop in reverse for this linked list. To do this, we simply start with the tail of the list, setting the tail to the current node, and then we have another while loop that loops through our entire list until we reach the end of the list which is null. So the same as before, we use the yield keyword to return the current node, and then we set the current node to the current node's previous node on each iteration. Then we break out the while loop once we reach the previous node that is null. The basic implementation of a linked list has an add method. The add method is the same as add last method, as in when we're using the add method, we're adding a new node to the end of the list. So here is our method add, which takes in data. Then we create a new node from that data. If the tail of the list is equal to null, then we set the new node to be the new head of the list. If the tail is not null, then we need to connect the new node to the end of the list. We do this by setting the new node's previous node to the old tail of the list. Once we are connected to the old tail of the list, then we set the current tail's next node to be equal to the new node. Now that the tail is connected to the list, then we simply set the new tail to be the new node. Since we added an item to the list, we must also increment the length of our list by one. Our next method is add first. This method adds a node to the beginning of the list. So we take in data to our add first method. We take that data and create a new node. We set the next node after the newly created node to the previous head of the list. If the previous head of the list was null, then we also need to set 
the new node as the tail node. Otherwise, if the previous head of the list was not null, then we need to set the old head previous node equal to the new node. Finally, we set the new head of the list to the new node. And then we increment our length by one because we're adding an item to the list. To see if an item is contained in the list, it does not matter if it's a singly linked list or doubly linked list. We have to search through the entire list. So here's our contains method that returns a bool if the value that we passed in is actually in the list. First, we set our current node to the head of the list. To search through the list, we have a while loop that starts with the current node, which is currently the head node, and goes through the entire list until we reach null, or the end of the list. On each iteration, we take the current node's data value and compare it to the value that was passed in. If these values are equal, then we return true that the list does contain that item. To get to the next item in the linked list, we simply set the current node's next node equal to the current node. If we went through the entire list, then we would simply return false, as no data in that list is equal to the data that we passed in to compare to. And so, that item is not in the list. The find method is very similar to the contains method, except for with the find method, we're returning the node that we found on the list. The find method simply finds the first node that contains the specified value that we passed into the method. So if we have the same data repeated multiple times, we will simply find the first instance of that data. So here's our find method. It returns a node and takes in an integer value. Since our data of each node is type integer in this case, first we set our current node to the head of the list, and then we loop through the list using a while loop going through each node until we find the end of the list, which will have a reference to null. So on each iteration, we compare our current node's data to the value that we passed in. And if they are equal, then we return the current node. Otherwise, to keep iterating through, we set the current node equal to the current node's next node. If we went through the entire list and could not find the node, we simply return null. Find last is the same as find, except for we're starting at the end of the list and then working backwards through the list to find the last occurrence of the current value. So here's our method find last. It returns a node. It takes in an integer value. We set our current node to the tail of the list since we are looping backwards. And we have a while loop to loop through the list until we reach a null. So just as before, we take our current data and compare it to the data that was passed in. If the data matches, we return the current node. Otherwise, to continue looping backwards through the list, we set the current node equal to the current node's previous node. If we reach the end of the list, we simply return null. Here's our remove method that takes in a value of type integer and returns a bool. If the item to remove exists, we return true. If it does not exist, we return false. We set the head node to the current node. Then we loop through our list using a while loop. If the current node's data is equal to the data that we passed in, then we found the node. Since we found the node, we must now remove the node. If the current node's next node is equal to null, then we're at the end of the list, and we set the tail to the current node's previous node. Otherwise, we set the current node's next node's previous node to the current node's previous node to join the pointers back together. If the current node's previous node is equal to null, then we're at the start of the list. So we set the head value to the current node's next node. Otherwise, we set the current node's previous node's next node equal to the current node's next node. Then we set the current node that was removed to null, decrement one from our length, return true. To continue through the loop, we set current.next node equal to the current node. Otherwise, if we break out of our loop, we return false. Our next method is remove first, which simply removes the first item in the list. If the head of the list is not equal to null, then there is an item in the list to remove. To remove the first item in the list, we simply take the head and set it to the next node in the list. If the head is now null, then we have an empty list and we must also set the tail to null. Then we decrement the length of the list by one. The next method is remove last. The remove last method, we simply remove the last item of the list. So if the tail of the list is not equal to null, then we set the tail to be the previous item in the list. If the tail is now null, 
then there are no items in the list and we must set the head to null. And then we must decrement the length of the list by one as we removed an item from the list. So here is an example of the current length list that we just created. So we create an instance of length list L by setting linked list L to a new instance of the linked list. Here we add some data to the beginning of the list. Here we add some data to the end of the list. So let's run this example and see how it works. As you can see, we added 44 first to the list, and then we called contains on the number 44, and it returns true as 44 is in our linked list. Then we remove 44 from the list and print out our list. As you can see, 44 has been removed from the list. Also, you can see we're able to loop through the list with a for each loop because we implemented ienumerable. Also, you can see our double digit numbers were added first to the list. So we added 25 first. So that'll be at the beginning of the list 25. And then we added 44 and removed it. So that won't be there. Then we added 77 first to the list, so 77 is there. And then we added 83 first to the list, so 83 will be at the beginning of our list. And then we first added our thousands numbers uh, with the regular add method, so 2,930 and 2,935 will be added to the end of the list. And then after that, we added uh, 100, 230, and 350. So as you can see, at the end of the list is 2,930, 2,935, 100, 230, 350. As you can see, we use our get enumerator reverse off of our linked list and do a for each loop over our linked list backwards. And that loops through the end of the list, as you can see, 350, 230, 350, 230, and it goes to 83, which is the start of the list, as you see, 83 over here. Also, since we removed 44, now that we do contains on the list and we look for the number 44, you can see it returns false as there is no 44 in our linked list. Now I add 75 first, which adds 75 to the beginning of the list, and I add 75, which will add 75 to the end of the list, and then simply loop through that list with a for each loop. As you can see, we have the same list with 75 appended to the beginning and the end of the list. And now if we use our find method for the number 75, we can see the first occurrence of 75 is found with the next node of 83, which is correct. We found 75 and the next node in the list was 83. As you can see, we get it here. We do link list find 75. Here, print out our data, which is 75. And then we do link list, do a find of 75. And then we get the next node of the list and look at its data, which is 83 as expected. Then we get the last occurrence of 75 in the list. Uh, we take the linked list and then we use the find last method. We put in 75 and we get the data back, which of course would be the last occurrence of 75. As you can see, it returns 75. And then we look at the previous node to make sure we're in the right spot on the list. And so the linked list, we find the last, so linked list, we find the last integer 75, and then we find its previous node and the previous node's data, which will be 350, as you can see, is matching with our list that we have up here. So 350 is before 75, which is the last 75 of the list. Simply the next method that we use, we take the linked list and we find the length that we've been keeping track of throughout our methods by adding by one and decrementing by one, whether we're adding a node or removing a node. And so we have a count of 10 or a length of 10. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. We have 10 integers in the list. So that's the correct expected result. And now we use our method remove first from the list and we loop through for the length of 10. And so now our length when we print out after we've removed all the items from the list is zero, just as we expected. Now there are no items in the list. So now let's add uh, three items back to the list. So we use the add method or add last method, which adds 100 first, then 230, then 350. So those are in the proper order as we do a for each loop over our current list again. And then we look at the length again 
and we have a length of three, just as we expected. And then if we scroll down again, we can use our remove last method and go through the length of the list. And so after we use our remove last method, we should have no elements left in the list. So we check our length again. As you can see, we print out the list, right? final to the console, and then I do a for each loop, and as you can see, no items are printed out because they are all removed from the list. And then we simply print out the length of the list, which is now zero, which is what we expected. And that's about it for the implementation of a linked list in C-sharp.